Yo, what is going on? We're back again with another video on the channel. This one is actually going to be a realistic rebuild of the Los Angeles Rams. we got Aaron Donald, Andrew Wilworth, and uh, Robert Quinn as their top three players. Sammy Watkins is also on the team. And uh, this is actually going to be pretty interesting. We're going to go over the roster in just a minute here. But it's like, what do we do with Jared Goff? Because obviously, if you guys will remember, the Rams spent not only the first overall pick on Jared Goff just a year ago, they traded um, a first-round pick in the next year's draft in order to get Jared Goff. So do we stick with Jared Goff as our starting quarterback or just, you know, cut our losses and take a new one uh, with whatever pick we can get to take a good player? I don't really know. This is going to be a very interesting one. We have about three to five years uh, to see how well we can do with realistic moves only. And based on feedback in the comment section of last time I did a realistic rebuild, which was the Houston Texans, you guys wanted me, if I recall, to have player-for-player player trades on occasion if they are realistic. And um, with free agent signings, what we had earlier was uh, for the entire um, cycle, so however many years we did, whether it was three, four, or five, I had one player that we could sign above 90 overall I think we had two from 80 to 90 and then unlimited below 80 overall and what you guys said is I think it was one per season now that we can do 90 plus overall just to make it a little bit more even and then I think you said I think it was three or four players in the 80 to 90 range I think we're gonna stick at like two or three though I think that's better for me and then still unlimited players below 80 and you guys can always help me tweak out um, what we're doing here but I guess let's go ahead and get right into it. So this is, of course, the roster. We've got Jared Goff as the starting quarterback, which, in my opinion, is pretty brutal. He has normal development, which I think is fair. Don't want to put him out slow. There's no real reason to, or, or quick would be unrealistic. Uh, Andrew Whitworth was an interesting signing in the offseason. I think that was pretty good for the Rams. Get a good veteran left tackle in there. we got Roger Saffold, John Sullivan, who I guess I didn't even realize he was on the Rams. Um... I don't know. We're probably going to start Gerald Everett over Tyler Higby. Rob Haven signs good. Who is this? This is it's Cody Wickman out of Fresno State. Wichman. I don't know. Uh, Todd Gurley. Great. Lance Dunbar. We got him. Malcolm Brown. The former Texas Longhorn. Absolutely. What a beast. We got Tavon Austin. I feel like the problem with this team is there isn't a true number one receiver. Because even though Cooper Cup is in here, he's playing in the slot. I feel like Tavon Austin is more of a slot receiver. I feel like Robert Woods is a somewhat decent number two, but nothing nothing to write home about. How tall is Cooper Cup? Like 6'2? Six 6'1? Six My connection's terrible, so uh, it's going to take me forever to actually click on Cooper Cup. He is 6'2. Alright. He actually looks really, really nice. Wish the speed was better, but like fantastic all around stats other than awareness. So he actually could be really good. And of course, in these realistic rebuilds, it's like. There's no trading first season, obviously, really at all. It's pretty much just, like, check out the team, diagnose, simulate, build through the draft and free agency. Defensive line is is really, really nice for the most part on this right side. On the left side, it's a different story. I don't even know who this is. Um, Luis Trinka Passat out of Iowa. Sorry. Is this uh, Ethan Westbrooks? I don't know. It is, okay. Um, he looks all right. Like, we have stuff we can work on with him, obviously. Tremaine Johnson. EJ Gaines should not be on this team. Oh, okay. I gotta make one move then to get Sammy Watkins on this team. I thought the roster would actually be accurate, but it's not. So I have to acquire uh, Sammy Watkins, and I gotta move EJ Gaines. So that is up next. All right, so this trade that happened in real life, and even the Bills gave up a six-round pick. I think it was this year. Uh, I'm going to have to restart this league, is what's going to have to happen, because clearly this trade does not go through, and uh, I'm going to get an updated roster that has this trade, so we can actually get Sammy Watkins on the team, and um, I'll be back. It's really frustrating. Alright, we are loaded back in, and this team looks much better now that the beast Jamon Brown is out there. Gerald Everts is 78 overall in this particular roster. Interesting. He is insane looking. All you got to do is upgrade awareness and route running, and he will be an absolute beast. Really have high hopes for Gerald Everett. Um, I like seeing bad teams do well. 
Rams are a really bad team. I think Gerald Everett can be a really good player. So I'm excited to see what he can do in the league. We're going to play Robert Woods at the two. I'm going to have to end up changing this in the depth chart. And Cooper Cup is a really solid four to have. Um, but the team looks obviously much better with Sammy Watkins and Jamon Brown. I don't know why I'm putting such an emphasis on Jamon Brown. Jamon Brown? Pretty sure it's Jamon Brown. Um, also, notably, last time I did this with the Texans, like, I didn't realize because I thought, like, obviously the defensive scheme is going to be what it actually is. But as you can see here, this is clearly a 3-4 setup with Robert Quinn and Connor Barwin both playing outside linebacker with Aaron Donald at an end spot with Michael Brockers as a nose tackle. Um, like, this is clearly a 3-4 scheme, yet the game automatically has it in a 4-3, and that is a gigantic problem, because if you're not paying attention, like, I wasn't in the Houston Texans uh, rebuild. I just saw the roster. I saw the, uh, like, lineup as it's listed. I'm like, okay, it's probably just a 3-4 anyway, or 4-3, and it's just listed incorrectly on here, so I don't have to change anything, but actually, you do have to go into schemes. You have to change the playbook. Um, and it's clearly not attacking 4-3. It's it's a 3-4. We'll run attacking 3-4. And uh, I don't really want to run Rams playbook on defense just because I want to make sure it's a 3-4 system and it will actually change, uh, change what you see here in this team selection. So as you'll be able to see here in just a minute, it does actually change to the actual 3-4 scheme because clearly Robert Quinn's not going to play outside linebacker. Connor Barman's not going to play outside linebacker in a 4-3. You're not going to bench Mark Barron, who's been really, really good since playing linebacker on the Rams. As a, I mean, he came out of college at Alabama, went to the Bucks, and really wasn't all that good, but he was a hard hitter. And they just said, you're playing linebacker now on the Rams, and he's been sick. So uh, if this would load any minute now, you can see that this is the correct scheme. Uh, Tremaine Johnson's pretty good. You got LaMarcus Joyner out there, who I think is more of a nickel cornerback. We'll try to get a safety and play him at nickel corner. And then we got Maurice Alexander at strong safety, replacing um, TJ McDonald. So this is actually not that bad of a team in the game. We have a lot to work with. It's just all about do we build up Jared Goff or go after a quarterback. But we're going to go ahead and advance to the midseason mark and see how we're doing uh, once we advance. All right, so here we are at the midseason mark. Three and four, actually doing a little bit better than I would have expected. I would have probably put this team around, I guess that's three and four is not bad, but probably around two wins at this time. I want to see what kind of XP situation we're looking at. I'm going to spend some of my coach XP. You can see there in the top right, we're at like 2,400. And I'm going to use that on, like if I can afford the expert scout package or whether I go with a, like, increased weekly XP for my players uh, but no one is really blowing me away in terms of XP a lot for Gerald Everett is cool but I wanted Jared Goff to uh, really have a lot not really showing it this is fine I'm gonna spend some of the coach XP resign I guess nobody it's odd uh, and I guess I'll see you guys for the playoffs which I really doubt will make considering we're sitting about mid table near the bottom of the NFC West but uh, see you for the playoffs, I guess. All right, so we did not make the playoffs, as you can see, by all the practice squad players being signed. We finished 9-7, and seven, which is, I would say, ridiculous. And did the CPU just spend all my XP? What the fuck, dude? <laughs> that's so annoying. God, that's, that's so frustrating. I'm actually really mad right now. As you can see, there are new overalls because of that. Uh, nothing too major other than, I would say, Nickel Roby Coleman, or Nickel Roby Coleman is an 80 overall. Aaron Donald's up to a 99. Uh, offensively, Sammy Watkins at a 90. Todd Gurley, 89. Gerald Everett, 82 overall. Uh, I'm actually, I'm going to go to my settings because I don't know what the CPU just did, but that really, really pissed me off. I guess I forgot to turn the progress player setting off, but that's still... <laughs> It's infuriating, honestly. We will check out the stats, see how we went 9-7, and seven, which, again, really mad we won that amount of games as well. QB stats for Jared Goff looks like 30, 600 yards, 23 touchdowns, 25 interceptions. So an absolutely terrible season. Rushing, Todd Gurley came back pretty well. 1,400 yards and 9 touchdowns is not bad at all. 11 touchdowns for Lance Dunbar at the backup position receiving. 
Robert Woods led our team in catches. The most yards on our team was 895 from Tavon Austin. 891 from Sammy Watkins was quite close. Gerald Everett led our team in touchdowns with six. Sammy Watkins also had six grabs in the end zone. Blocking, how we do? Not a whole lot of sacks allowed, which is good to see, I guess. Defensively, Alec Ogletree led our team in tackles with 142. He was the only one in triple digits. Robert Quinn came kind of close. Tackles for loss would be 12 from AD. Absolute beast. Quarterback sacks, 15 from Aaron Donald, 8 from Connor Warren. Only 5.5 for Robert Quinn. I might move this team back to a 4-3 and um, get Aaron Donald at defensive tackle. Michael Brockers, defensive tackle. Robert Quinn back to right end. And uh, I guess we could slide Connor Barwin down potentially. Move uh, Mark Barron over to left outside linebacker. Maybe he stays in middle. Maybe I move Alec Ogletree over. I don't know. We'll decide. Interceptions, Alec Ogletree led our team in picks with three. Multiple players had two. Nothing too crazy. Forced fumbles. See a lot of those actually. Aaron Donald and Robert Quinn both had three fumble recoveries. Two for Robert Quinn. Any defensive touchdowns? No. Okay. See who won any awards. Probably going to be ridiculous. Matty Ice. Matty Ice. 15 1. Falcons wins the MVP. The Packers go 7 and 9. That's just insane. What team am I doing? I'm doing the Rams. So, NFC Offense Player of the Year goes to Aaron Rodgers, even though Matt Ryan won MVP. I don't know. I really can't explain that. Defense Player of the Year goes to Deion Jones, another Falcon, getting an award there. Any Rams in there? Alec Ogletree at number two, actually. And Aaron Donald at number seven. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Mitch Trubisky. Gerald Everett comes in the top five, though, at number four. And then Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Jared Davis, the Florida linebacker. Now in the Detroit Lions. Any Rams in here? No? Look, I saw Monte Nicholson. He was like a six-round draft pick out of Michigan State. I don't know how he got in there, but good for him, I guess. Let's go ahead and advance to the offseason, though and uh, see how we can better this team through the draft and free agency. So an interesting collection of free agents here. We see Drew Brees. I just don't see the Rams ever getting a quarterback in free agency. I feel like they would probably opt to draft one again. See Brent Grimes, not really too interested in that. Shaquille Barrett could be the move. Don't really know. I don't really want Paul Pazlozny. He's 33 years old. Um, Timmy Jernigan could be a decent option. I could move him to left end if I go back to a 4-3. He's more of a 3-4 player. Timmy Jernigan could be the move. I'm going to try to pick up Timmy Jernigan, bring back John Sullivan at center. And, um... Huh, I think there's one more player. I think I'm also going to go after Shaq Barrett. Play him at left outside linebacker. Or maybe even defensive end, depending on what scheme I go to. I'm not sure, but I'm going to make those adjustments. Try to get these players on the team. See how we're looking post free agency. And I guess I will see you guys uh, for the draft. All right, so we got John Sullivan, Timmy Jernigan, and Shaq and Barrett. They're going to slide in nicely to the team. Somehow Todd Gurley is not an 89 overall anymore. Don't know exactly how that works. And I just saw offensively looks like uh, Andrew Whitworth retired, which leaves a gigantic hole at left guard. Or should be left tackle. That's, uh, again, really annoying. Gonna have to figure out what to do there. Might have to draft a left tackle now. So let's get on with it, I guess. Figure out what to do with this scheme uh, before the start of the next season. So if you guys don't remember the way we do the draft is I will just draft the players and then show you guys the draft class for these realistic rebuilds so we can actually make them uh, NFL draft prospects, so college players. So like if we were to draft a quarterback, say even if it was a guy who is an 80 overall out of I don't know, Florida, and he's a good quarterback, what we would do is change the height, weight, name in college to match, to, let's say, Josh Rosen, Rosen out of UCLA, uh, but the stats would remain the same, so even if we draft Josh Rosen, who happens to be a 74 overall, uh, and say like he would actually project to an 80 coming out, like we'd still leave him at a 74 overall, whatever the development happens to be, we're just changing the name in the college to add a little bit more fun, a little bit more uh, uh, realism to these rebuilds so we have actual draft prospects. So I will do the draft. We have the 19th overall pick in each uh, round of the NFL draft, one to seven. So I don't really know what we're gonna be able to do here. There, there are some decent players. Nine or seven, the number one overall pick. Lions at number two. They have another pick in this draft? Or did they just do that poorly? Jeez, 
I don't even know how that happened. Anyway, I will simulate to my pick and uh, see you guys at the end of the draft or for the start of next season. I don't, I don't know. So I'm going to jump right back in here for a minute. Uh, we're actually going to trade down this first round pick. Don't really have anyone I want to draft right now. So I have a great offer here from the Saints for their first round pick next year, a second round pick next year, and a third round pick this year. So I am going to accept that. So there will be no first round pick this year. So I have decided to not address any of these offensive linemen that I took or any of the late round guys. I did not decide to change their names. We did change the top two guys in Cameron Smith out of USC and Paris Campbell out of The Ohio State University. And overall, I think this was a phenomenal draft class. You don't see any 80s, don't, th don't see anything like that, but you see a bunch of mid-70s and Cameron Smith has quick development. He's gonna play middle linebacker. Paris Campbell is insane, only normal development, but you see these stats and you're like, that's a 75 overall player. I think he was like number 23 in the draft, but it still said 75 overall. But as you can see, phenomenal player, 91 speed, 85 catch and traffic, 93 spec catch, 89 jumping, 85 catching, 86 to sell, 80 route running. He's incredible. He was taken in the third round. We also have Quinn Hudson, 74 overall. I think one of these linemen had quick development. Was it Malcolm Yoder? I think it was Siragusa down there in round number five. I can't do anything with my controller right now. Um, I'm pretty sure it was Siragusa. He had A minus impact block. Yeah. He's kind of insane. 89 impact block, 84 run block, 77 pass block, 86 strength with a quick development as a six round guy. I took him in the fifth. I also got Spencer Cleveland, who is really nice looking as well. 95 speed, 97 excel, 6'2, 78 man, 78 press, 71 zone, and play record awareness are terrible. But that's someone when you could potentially build up. Crazy player to play with with 95 speed at 6'2. Kind of like a DRC coming out. Uh, a little bit worse, obviously. But that was our draft class. I think we did really, really well. Now, I'm not quite sure where any of these players fit yet. I haven't changed around the scheme or the depth chart, anything like that. So I'm going to do that and then get back to you guys before the start of season number two. So we're actually going to make some changes as well. Connor Barwin will be released from the team. We cut him uh, and free 3.21 mil in cap room. We got a 2.9 mil uh, penalty, though. Don't really care too much about that. Not really in a position where cap is a major problem. And Roger Saffold is actually going to be cut as well. I wanted to keep Jamon Brown over him purely because of youth, and I kind of wanted to play uh, the rookie Malcolm Yoder over him. Uh, but Roger Saffold, 30 years old, I just don't see him improving on this new Rams team. There's no real reason to keep him around. Did I just not cut him? Did it tell me I couldn't? Uh, I don't know what just happened there. Roger Saffold is not going to be on this team. I know that for a fact. Alright, connection's great. Uh, I don't know what's going on at all. But uh, we move back to a 4-3. Let me go ahead and go back to the defense here. We are starting the rookie Cameron Smith at right outside linebacker. We also had Alec Ogletree starting at middle linebacker. Mark Barron's going to play mainly special teams. Shaq Barrett's going to play left outside linebacker. The defensive line, we're going to keep Aaron Donald at right end, play Robert Quinn over on that left side, and then there are two defensive tackles. Michael Brockers and Timmy Jernigan should do really well. Still need to improve that cornerback position. I'll probably start uh, Cleveland here in the slot. And uh, safeties are fine for now. I couldn't really find any of the draft that I wanted. And um, I want to figure out what to do with this receiving core because I don't really want Robert Woods. I kind of thought about trading Tavon Austin. I think his contract's too bad, and I don't think that makes a ton of sense for the Rams. So we'll play him, or should we play him in the slot. I don't really know what I want to do with Robert Woods. I think he's going to be my fourth receiving option. I think I'm going to start Paris Campbell at the number two. So I will make those changes and see you guys at the midseason mark. I don't know. This is kind of make, make or break for Jared Goff. That's what it is. Make or break. See you there. So at the midseason mark, we are 3-4. and four, Absolutely killing the game. Along with the, the rest of the NFC West, everyone is 3-4 and four, except for the Seahawks who are 2-6. and six. That makes sense. Anyway, Aaron Donald is clearly our biggest free agent here. Who else is here? Who else? Todd Gurley. I don't really care too much about Corey Harkey. I think... I think my man Rob needs to come back. Uh, yeah, he definitely does. So let's go ahead and re-sign all these guys, and I will let you know when we do. All right, so we brought back Rob Havenstein, Todd Gurley, 
Not doing anything with Corey Harkey just now. Um, really have no care to deal with any of those other free agents currently or impending free agents. So I'm just going to scout and see you guys for the playoffs. Not going to bother spending any of our XP. We're just not realistically going to make the playoffs. Which actually, you know what? I'll, I will. I will use our XP because we could make the playoffs. I forgot this division is terrible. Everyone's three and four. We could actually make the playoffs. I don't really want to, though. I know that sounds kind of strange, but I want a higher draft pick. Because, I mean, this team's not that good. It won't do anything in the playoffs. I'm just going to scout and simulate. See for the playoffs. All right, so we did not make the playoffs, which I'm kind of excited about in some regard. We finished 7-9, and nine, which I guess there was a chance we could have made the playoffs. But if everyone's uh, using XP, I guess it probably would have finished the same exact way regardless. Uh, Jared Goff. It's kind of a weird season. 3,300 yards, 20 touchdowns, 11 picks. Like, it's not terrible, but it's also not good in any way. Rushing, Todd Gurley did really well. 1,400 yards, 12 touchdowns. Receiving, Sammy Watkins over 1,000 yards, 8 touchdowns. Gerald Everett, 5 touchdowns, came in second. Paris Campbell, really good season as well. 59 catches for 555 yards and 2 touchdowns as a rookie. Not really that, not really that bad at all. Blocking. How'd some of these rookies perform? Because we we played a decent amount of them. I think two started for sure. I don't know how many snaps the other ones would have gotten. Connection is poor. Hudson Siragusa as a rookie led up 13 sacks, which in Madden Sim is really not bad. A um, bunch of players with over 100 tackles now that we're in the 4-3. The and Oh my god, Aaron Donald. 24 and a half sacks, 10 for Timmy Jernigan, 7 and a half for Robert Quinn. Getting after the quarterback. Eight picks for Tremaine Johnson. Yo, what is going on right now? This is not what we saw last year. Maybe 4-3 is the move for Sim. Tremaine Johnson, four, pit, uh, four forced fumbles. Three for both AD and Robert Quinn. Fumble recoveries. No one had more than one. And I see two defensive touchdowns. Tremaine Johnson and LaMarcus Joyner. Yearly awards. Don't expect to see anyone for the MVP race. Uh, from the Rams, maybe Defensive Rookie of the Year, Offensive Rookie of the Year, Defensive Player of the Year, something like that. Aaron Rodgers wins MVP, no Rams. NFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to, I assume, Aaron Rodgers. But who knows? I really doubt I'd see any Rams here. It does go to Aaron Rodgers. Ooh, Todd Gurley at number nine, I'll take it. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Aaron Donald. Yes, that makes a ton of sense with 24 and a half sacks. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to James Coker, the quarterback from the New Orleans Saints. Um, any Rams? Yeah, Paris Campbell at number four. Nobody else. Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Cameron Smith. Finally, I get an award on one of these. Spencer Cleveland, number five as well. But that is huge from Cameron Smith. That's going to be maybe even Superstar Development Boost with a ton of XP. We're going to check it out, see how it is. But Superstar Dev would be incredible to, it, to attain. I don't know if it would have added, though. Yeah, Cameron Smith is 53k. They didn't give him plus development trait though. I guess I, I maybe you can only attain quick from that. Um, where is Cleveland? Not a ton of XP for him, but we have a ton of XP for a lot of these players, especially offensively. Todd Gurley 20k, above 10k for Tavon Austin, Sammy Watkins, Paris Campbell near there. Offensive line with kind of a bunch. Gerald Everett with near 10k. 14k from Syracuse though is going to be really helpful. Get that pass block and awareness up, and he should be golden. So, I don't know where we're going to pick. Hopefully, there are some good free agents we can go after. Hopefully, improve that secondary with a good cornerback, something like that. Uh, maybe a linebacker. I don't really know what I'm looking for. going to kind of play by your... Damn, Jay Ajayi is a 97 overall. What happened? Superstar Dev, yeah, he's insane looking. Joe Thomas is interesting. I'm not going to go after him. Geno Atkins is interesting. DRC... Oh, Adrian Amos. Adrian Amos could be the move. Get him on the team. Move LaMarcus Joyner down to nickel cornerback. Ooh. This is tempting. This really is tempting. I think I'm going to get Adrian Amos. DRC, like, I like the look of that. But Adrian Amos would be an incredible addition to our team. We'll give him a pretty big deal. Four or five. So that's 39 and a half, basically, over six. It's 101 total points. That puts us in the lead by a decent bit. We're fine with that. And uh, instead of Corey Harkey, I'm going to go after this guy here, Bryant Bright. 
one year out of Ohio State. Get a decent fullback on our team. And uh, I guess I'll actually have to make an even better offer. That's fine. I'll get both of these guys, Bryant Bright, as well as Adrian Amos. And we will head to the draft. So I do have the 10th pick and the 12th pick of the first round. I forgot about that. So um, there's not a whole lot of talent here. And I don't think there are a ton of players that can really improve my team. Oh, that's right. DeAndre Rice, that I just went at number nine of the Bears. Insane player. Really wanted to draft him. Uh, super unfortunate that that did not happen. Like, super unfortunate. All right, guys, I'm back, and a lot of time has passed. You can see I am uh, out of the shower now, many hours later, so I am nice and moist. Anyway, the draft is over. In fact, it's been over for quite a while, uh, several hours. As i got to unplug my controller and plug it back in. And in the draft, we selected uh, first Connor McGovern, a left guard out of Penn State, followed up by Taylor Rapp, a safety out of Washington, Michael Deiter, a center out of Wisconsin. I did not change the name of Dane Fugger. Um, because, it, you know, fuck her right in the pussy, right? And uh, Shea Patterson, quarterback out of Ole Miss in the third round. We did end up selecting a quarterback. He was in the third round, though. Uh, but I did want to show you guys these picks. I didn't change anyone past Patterson, and, of course, I didn't touch, touch Fugger. Um, so the rest, I didn't really think it mattered. We drafted a fullback, Austin Bartram out of Clemson. That's not a real person the way the rest are. Like, once you get to this point in the realistic rebuilds, it is really tough because, um, like, the players are freshmen in college and you don't really know how they're going to gonna develop. So this is probably going to be the last year that we change names in this uh, realistic rebuild. But we got a bunch of really, really good players. For example, Connor McGovern, who we took here in the first round, 10th overall pick. Good player. 78 overall really can't complain only normal development however taylor rap i just thought he was really really good um 91 speed 88 hit power decent zone to work with but he also has superstar development so we could probably play him if we wanted to but with that man coverage i might just make him a corner i'm not really sure what i want to do michael Deiter, we needed a good center we didn't really get a great one uh, unfortunately in the second round he's a 74 overall i can't really plug and play him but Dane Fugger happens to be a beast out of Louisville. He is an 80 overall right guard. He can come in and play immediately. He's a significant upgrade over who we had there previously. As you can see, all we need to do is really boost awareness. And he's going to be phenomenal. And then we have Shea Patterson out of Ole Miss. Quick development is a really interesting development. Nice little whatever. Because um, it's like, what do we do with Jared Goff? He hasn't really developed. He hasn't necessarily played well at all. And would we draft a quarterback in the third round to play him over Jared Goff? I'm going to say there's a competition in camp for it. And um, I'm going to say Shea Patterson impresses. We're going to go with the fresh face and start the rookie out of Ole Miss. And this is going to be the team for season number three. Yes. I'm going to change the round table. And Austin's going back in the slot. Paris Campbell's going back at number two. And then defensively, LaMarcus Joyner now plays cornerback. He's an 84 overall. That's fantastic. We still need cornerbacks. I mean, like, this is just not a great set of corners. But it is what it is right now. Taylor Rapp, he's not going to play all that much, which is kind of a waste for superstar safety. But that is what it is. But before we go anywhere, as you guys can see, the adjusted overalls. Cameron Smith, 88 overall. Absolutely insane. Quick development as well. He's great. I did want to check out that safety from the Bears, so we are going to see that. It could take a while for this to load. Oh, it doesn't. That's actually awesome. I want to see the safety. He is a 79 overall, 97 speed at safety. Oh, my God. 80 zone, 86 at power. Quick development. He's 97 speed. <laughs> this Ed Reed? I don't know. Ed Reed wasn't 97 speed fast, but still. Okay. Um, I'm going to change around this team a little bit and see you guys at the midseason mark. So under the leadership of quarterback Shea Patterson, we are 4-3 and three at the midseason mark. Not doing that poorly. However, oh, 49ers, okay. That's a rebuild for another time. We have a shot at the playoffs, I would say. Uh, we're right there with the Seahawks, and this is a pretty good team. I'm going to upgrade our players now and really try to make a push for the playoffs here in this third season. Also, got to bring back Robert Quinn and I assume other players. 
it's probably a fair assumption to make Robert Quinn, Michael Brockers, Greg the Leg, Zerlon, Jared Goff. Interesting. Very interesting. All right, so we made the playoffs, and Devontae Freeman wins MVP. Good for him, man. Where'd the logo go? Can we light back up, please? Whatever. Uh, I don't know what's going on. We're 10 and 6. Season is over. I ended up playing Taylor Rapp at uh, nickel cornerback, by the way. I don't remember mentioning that because I didn't. Hopefully, that is a rookie of the year for Shea Patterson. He has a ton of XP, more than Jared Goff ever got. That is for sure. But we'll check out the stats, see how everyone performed. I mean, we made the playoffs, right? And Shea Patterson did not look like he was a big part of that. 3,300 yards, 25 touchdowns to 23 interceptions. Todd Gurley uh, played amazingly, almost 1,700 yards, 12 touchdowns. Receiving, Sammy Watkins, over 1,000 yards, 8 touchdowns. Gerald Everett, 7 TDs as well. Nobody else really did anything too crazy. Blocking, this was kind of a revamped offensive line, I'm not going to lie. Bunch of new players in there and younger players coming into their second seasons. Uh, I think, honestly, Rob Havenstein, I say it differently every time. He's the youngest player on this entire line. Uh, defensively, though, Al Tree was one of two players with over 100 tackles. Cameron uh, Smith, yep, Smith also had that as well. Tackle for loss, Aaron Donald had 13, but look at quarterback sacks. Robert Quinn, 14, AD, 12 and a half. How about interceptions? Six for LaMarcus Joyner, four for Tremaine Johnson. Taylor Rapp only got one. That's probably not good enough for Defensive Rookie of the Year. Forced fumbles, one for a handful of players. Fumble recoveries, same deal. Any defensive touchdowns? I don't see any. We got two, though. LaMarcus Joyner and Maurice Alexander. Yearly awards, obviously, Devontae Freeman wins MVP. What? Leonard Fournette's in second, which it's just so odd that you see halfbacks in here uh, at the top and two in a row, and then Trevor Simeon with the Patriots. 80 overall in the MVP uh, race. I don't know how that's a thing. Also, I don't know how the Patriots went 11 and five with an 80 overall quarterback. I swear this thing's rigged, dude. Blake Bortles, 12 and four as a 79 overall. What is going on? Let's check out NFC Offense Player of the Year, Devontae Freeman, any Rams? No. Defense Player of the Year, Jalen Smith, any Rams? No. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Shea Patterson. That's what I like to see. Maybe he got superstar development, but I doubt it. Defensive Rookie of the Year, Taylor Rapp finishes in third. Tough. All right, I'll take it though. Got some XP, got some coach XP. I'm gonna spend all of this and I'll show you guys the completed team, fully upgraded team before we take on the Seattle Seahawks division rival in the wildcard playoff round. So this is the upgraded team. I think it looks pretty nice overall. Shea Patterson up to an 81 overall. Gerald Everett up to an 87. Sammy Watkins up to a 92. I guess that's somewhat notable. Offensive line is improving. John Sullivan's probably going to retire after this year, I would guess. he Maybe not. He's 34, but I'd probably be better off starting Michael Deiter anyway. I should have done that. I should have looked at their stats. Deiter, despite being uh, several overall points worse, is way better and is actually really young. Linebacking core looks great. I think the secondary is awesome. I basically said, all right, we got safeties. You all play cornerback now. Shout out to the Packers, but we did it right. Defensive line is looking really, really nice, I would say, overall. And I think I'm ready to hop into this game against the Seattle Seahawks. If you are new around here, which I'm sure there are always going to be people who are new, 85 overall, that's that's rough. Um, we don't actually play these games. We like to build up the team through you know the rebuild process. And then we like to let the team showcase what they can do and what I've built. So if I played, I'm confident I would win like every single time against whatever CPU it is, you know, rookie, veteran, all pro, all Madden. I, it's not that hard. So got to let the team do it. 10 and 6 Rams, 9 and 7 Seahawks, 7 overall points is the difference. And uh, hopefully, hopefully we can get the job done, get the win. It's odd. I look at the uh, the Rams jersey and like those... Uh, Navy and white helmets look so good as Greg Zerline misses two consecutive extra points and the Seahawks are a field goal away from tying this thing up or actually taking the lead as he actually converts the field goal there 15 to 10 is such an odd score Seahawks get a field goal make it 13 to 15 we got a score here we got to end this dude come on okay 15 to 13 is your final score as we do get the job done 
I do not know why in simulation kickers are absolutely pitiful at kicking extra points. Seems like it happens every time. Happened with Steven Goskowski. Happened now with Greg Zerline. Like, I can understand if it's Roberto Aguayo. We don't have Roberto Aguayo. We have Greg Zerline. Granted, Greg Zerline isn't amazing, but he's decent. Decent enough to not miss two extra points in a row and nearly cost me the game. Like, that's, that's really, really bad. Like, he has good kick act. I'll show you his stats. Like, they're not bad. He shouldn't be missing twice in a row. Even once is kind of ridiculous in my opinion. So here is Greg Zerlon. 90 kick accuracy. I know the awareness is really low, but 90 kick accuracy and you miss two extra points in a row? How does that work? How does that work? So his extra point percentage percentages have been like very high for the most part. And like these two are blocked, and I guess he just missed, but 100% on the entire season. And then we get into the actual game and we simulate and he misses two in the same game. What is his field goal percentage, by the way? It's 68? Dude, what in the world? How do you have 90 kick accuracy? Dude, I don't even know. We got the Falcons here in the divisional. They went 12 and four. I don't think this is gonna go particularly well. They're a 92 overall and we're an 88 now. I, don't, I still don't know how that works. It's like every year, just in the in the uh, playoffs, your overall just gets raised every once in a while. But let's see if we can get it done. All right, here we go. Out to an early lead, and Greg Zerline actually makes the extra point, and they miss one. 10-9 to 9 is the score after the missed extra point, and I don't know how he didn't score just there. Down by six. We're going to tie things up and miss the extra point, I guess. 22 to 16 is the score. Now 19 to 22, 25 to 19, and that is the final score. But as I said earlier, like if the Rams didn't have the yellow, it would look, or the gold or whatever that is, it's definitely gold, but it would look so much better. Shea Patterson has been pretty poor, I gotta say, in these playoff games. Like that's that's absolutely awful. Let's see kicking though. Oh, Goskowski, what a surprise. Look, dude. If anyone from EA is watching this, this is a problem. This is a very big problem. Greg Zerline misses an extra point. Steven Goskowski misses two. Three extra points missed in the same game. And this only happens when you're super simming, as far as I can tell. And it's really, really, really bad. So I've chosen to retain Jared Goff purely because like, he's a decent backup option. He's only 25. So, I mean, former number one overall pick there's no reason to get rid of him but it's just like Shea Patterson is so much better right now and he has quick development so there's no real need for Jared Goff uh to start but I mean he's decent depth it's just such a waste of a number one overall pick for someone that you know never really had the traits that you look for never really had the arm strength or the decision making or the knowledge of the game it's just you know just unfortunate for the Rams I think they kind of shot themselves in the foot so I put in offers for both Jalen Smith and Lamar Miller, and we got both of them. I wanted more depth at the running back position, and Lamar Miller was a crafty veteran that could come in and play. He's probably, like, 32 in this, some in that neighborhood, maybe a bit younger, 31, I could see. Uh, I'm trying to look it up. He's only 29. Okay, jeez. Good player. We kind of need some help at wide receiver, you could say, and definitely need a backup tight end. We're coming up on the draft, and I don't really need much I feel cornerback definitely I almost signed Jalen Ramsey and if he's there I might make an offer but I feel like two 99 overall players in the same year would be ridiculous so we're not going to do that but I wonder if he's still there that's a, that's a thing for another time though and at this point by the way like there's no point in changing the names these players won't even be in college yet so there's whatever they are we don't really need a safety but Jesus. He's looking pretty nice. I'm not even going to bother with the draft. I mean, there's no one that was good in it. So there's no point in in doing the draft. And, I mean, like, no one's really going to help us out too much. We still have needs on the offensive line, and I, I'll sign a backup tight end. But uh, we're going to go ahead and simulate the draft and start season number four. Okay, well, the CPU drafted a center for us, Bennett Vance out of Florida, and he's amazing. 79 overall, quick development. 
yeah, he's going to start. The rest of the talent that was drafted, uh, somewhat talentless, I suppose you could say. Didn't no one drafted a tight end? That's annoying. I wanted a tight end. Now I got to sign one, which sucks. But I guess we have a really, a really good new starting center, which is pretty awesome. All right, so this is going to be the team for season number four. Looking pretty good. Uh, we got Bagger Vance at center. So that's a reference. I still haven't seen that movie. I don't think I'm ever going to at this point. I think Will Smith is in it. I don't know. If you've seen it, uh, is it good? Should I watch it? Whatever. Team's looking kind of nice. Jalen Smith is our headliner there at middle linebacker on defense. And uh, I guess he's not really a headliner. We've got Aaron Donald. We got... I guess Aaron Donald is kind of it. But... Let's go ahead and simulate to the midseason mark. See how we're doing. Another shot at the playoffs. Hopefully we make a, uh, another run. This one a bit deeper this time. Let's, uh, let's get it. One and four. Okay. Um, how? How does that happen? We only got better. All right, one and four. That is pretty poor. So Gerald Everett, free agent, Johnny Hacker, Alec Ochiltree is showing like he's an 84 overall, but he's not because he's, well, maybe he is, I don't know, I guess. He was like a 79 overall in the depth chart or 82 or something like that. It wasn't, it wasn't 84, but these are our free agents. I don't remember getting John Johnson at all. I guess he was already on the team. I just didn't notice. He looks pretty nice. I, I, I don't know. I, I can't use him. It's the only problem. He's not fast enough either. But I think I'm going to bring the top three back for sure. Maybe Cooper Cup. Not not positive on that. But Gerald Everett, Johnny Hecker, and Alec Ogletree pretty much for sure. So we did bring back all three. We're going to save the rest for, uh, for a little bit later in the year. Um, I guess I didn't simulate to the midseason mark the first time. I just did it. And we're one and six. I can't really explain it. Don't know why that's the case. We're just getting absolutely rocked. Lost to the Jets. I mean, all these are really, really close losses besides the Seahawks. and I guess the Bills and the Packers. What is going on, dude? I mean, really, I have no answer for that. Season four has been an absolute disaster. I don't think this team's that bad. I really don't. And, like... Shea Patterson is fairly average. He's only uh, in his second year. I don't really know what to upgrade on him as far as, like, traits go. I think we got, like, the best traits on him. I upgraded those, but we're just not winning games, and I'm not sure why. Probably Greg Zerline missing extra points and things like that. Yeah, we got rocked. I mean, we obviously weren't going to make the playoffs. We finished 8-8. Eight and eight. That's ridiculous. That is so stupid. This is the thing that's happened again and again in simulation. Um, and I, I think I just clicked the wrong thing. This has happened again and again in simulation, and it's starting off the season really, really poorly. Look at this. One, and is that seven? One and, one and seven. Can I count? One and six. That's definitely six. It's hard when I see a bunch in a row. And then, this happens? Are you kidding me? That's unreal. I mean, we lose to the Cowboys by three. That's whatever. Lose to the Falcons, that's fine. The Falcons are sick. But we destroy the rest of these teams for the most part. Like, none of these are really close games besides the 49ers uh, and the Redskins. And it's like, why do we have to have the surge in the second part of the season? We would have made the playoffs otherwise, but uh, no, unfortunately we do not. Let's check out the stats before we move on to the fifth and final season. Shea Patterson, 3,600 yards, 29 touchdowns, 15 interceptions. That needs to be better. Needs to be better. I'm gonna make a change for the for the last season. See if that does anything. Todd Gurley, really good season. Nearly 1,500 yards and 15 touchdowns receiving. Sammy Watkins, 1,300 yards, eight touchdowns. Gerald Everett, I think he's played pretty well the the entire franchise. I have to say, entire rebuild. I just got to get his route running up. I think, and then he's gonna be a little bit better. Blocking. John Sullivan didn't play really at all. Quarterback sacks are pretty much down for the most part. Defensively, Jalen Smith led our team in tackles. I would hope so. Tackles for loss, 12 from AD. Quarterback sacks, 
Nobody with huge numbers, but a lot of pressure overall, I think, for the most part. Not a lot, but a decent bit. Robert Quinn with double-digit sacks. Interceptions, five for Jalen Smith. Two for a handful of cornerbacks. This is another thing in simulation. I feel like linebackers get the most interceptions on the team, like nine times out of every ten seasons. Adrian Amos forces two fumbles. Pretty much no turnovers at all. And then one defensive touchdown for Tremaine Johnson. I don't even know what these awards are going to look like. James Coker of the Saints wins MVP. 87 overall, 9-6-1 team. All right. NFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Aaron Rodgers. James Coker somehow wins MVP and finishes in third in voting. Todd Gurley at number 10. Uh, Jalen Smith at number 3 for Defensive Player of the Year. Sean Lee actually wins it. And Franklin Hopkins, a 76 overall player, finishes number 2. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Ray Kelly. Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Franklin Hopkins. Interesting. Any Rams in here? No. I don't know who we would have drafted. So I went in and signed Rod Johnson. He's going to play um, at right tackle over Rob Havenstein. I just think he's going to work better. Uh, my man Rob over there is unfortunately getting up there in age. He's not old at all, like at all. But it's just like he's not really developing at all is the problem. He's 29, but like his stats are just abysmal. Awareness is the highest, and I can't have that. Rod Johnson is a significant upgrade significant upgrade if I get his awareness up to an 87 like he's like a 92 93 overall so I'm comfortable with that change that was made I guess I probably could use some more backups I mean not really but kind of especially at outside linebacker geez yeah let's go ahead and, and get some players I guess I'll, I'll, um, I'll let the CPU handle that actually I will mention, I've seen a lack of ballers in these drafts. I don't know if I've seen one who said, fuck you to Roger Goodell and skip the combine. Just don't see any. It's pretty pretty disappointing, gotta, gotta say. All right, Vikings with the number one overall pick. Interesting. We're, yeah, middle of the pack at 18, pretty much middle. And really the one place where we could use some improvement, I suppose, is cornerback. The talent just isn't there. It's not here. This draft class is just not good. Um, might take a chance at a random cornerback. As you can see, though, they all kind of suck. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't really want to take any of these players. I'll take Landon Brazil. It's pretty good. It works for me. CPU can handle the rest. I'm ready for the fifth and final season. We are taking... The league by storm, making the playoffs, getting kicked out in the divisional. It's happening. CPU drafted some absolute gems. Check them out. Oh, they're so good. What a draft class. What a draft class. Has Maurice Alexander had slow development the entire time? That's pretty bad. What we're going to do in that case, I think, is move LaMarcus Joyner. Does he have 87, man? What happens if I make LaMarcus Joyner strong safety? Do you become pretty high overall? 80. Eh, not going to do it. Not going to do it for me. So the cornerbacks just never really got all that good. This is a this was just a weak defensive secondary. I guess, I don't know why I said defensive secondary. It was a weak secondary. Um, and who's Bartram, dude? How are you playing over Bryant Wright? I don't know, we have two really good fullbacks. It doesn't matter at all. Um, I don't know. I feel like this team's good enough to win. I hope so. I'm simulating to the playoffs. Please. Actually, I'll stop it at the midseason mark. I'm not going to break tradition, even though I sometimes do this. We'll stop it week four. Week four, I will stop it. And then, nah, I'm gonna do midseason. I don't, I don't know what I'm doing right now. I totally forgot to stop it. Okay, <laughs> we made the playoffs. So yes, nine and seven. I love it. Decent amount of XP for a handful of guys. Forty-three for Taylor Rapp. How? How? Only thirteen K for Shea Patterson though. That is, that is not looking good. That is not looking good. 
How do we do stat wise? Shea Patterson, stop throwing interceptions, please. Please. Why is that the case? Rushing. Oh, Todd Gurley gets better and better and better and better every year. And I. Oh, God, I, I gotta get my head in the game. I said I was gonna try out something and I was gonna change the playbook and I just didn't. I'm making mistakes out here. Oh, offensive line performing admirably. Cameron Smith led our team in tackles 132. Tackles for loss 12 from AD. Quarterback sacks 12.5 from AD. 11.5 from Robert Quinn. 9.5 from Michael Brockers, who. Generally, it's not a pass-rushing defensive tackle, but he got a Taylor Rapp four interceptions. That's what I like to see. i got to find out where he got all his XP from. I assume it's making a Pro Bowl. Three forced fumbles from him as well. To also, two fumble recoveries. Two defensive touchdowns? Yo, Taylor Rapp was playing like a man on a mission. He did, of course, make the Pro Bowl. That XP is going to help him out. Probably 88 overall, I would say. How do we do awards-wise? MVP goes to A-Rod. NFC Offensive Player of the Year, Devontae Freeman. Aaron Rodgers at number two. Ty Gurley at number nine. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Jordan Hicks. Hook him horns. Bad loss to Maryland, though, over the weekend. That was pretty tough to watch. Sherrod Spock. Offensive Rookie of the Year, number eight spot. Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Frank Moody, 74 overall. Interesting. No Rams in there. The rest don't particularly matter for me right now. So I'm going to use some of this XP. Hopefully get us into a position... Uh, where the team is insane. We can't be stopped. We beat the Seahawks. We roll through the playoffs and uh, walk out of here with the Super Bowl trophy, Lombardi trophy, Super Bowl championship in the fifth season. All right, so this is the upgraded team. Offensive line is looking really, really nice. Receiving core, like I never really thought this was an issue, but like Tavon Austin, Paris Campbell, Robert Woods have been moving in place. Oh, I didn't even see you. Brazel, the rookie wide receiver. Is he a rookie? We might have drafted him last year. Regardless, he's an 81 overall. He is a rookie. I did not even see that. We should have been playing him above Robert Woods, honestly. Tavon Austin's out of here. Brazel is coming in. He's going to play slot receiver. Defensively, we are looking nice, though. Look at Taylor Rapp at cornerback. 91 overall. He's a beast. He's so good. The defensive line is still pretty good for the most part. Looks solid across the board. I think this should be enough to get it done. If it's not, I'm gonna be shocked. I won't be shocked actually, but Ram Seahawks, wild card round. Please, Greg Zerline, make your extra points. All right, here we go. Seattle, touchdown and missed extra point, followed by a field goal, but we score a touchdown and missed the extra point, love it. 18 to 6 is your score now 21 to 6 and this game is quickly getting away from us 13 to 24 now 31 13 34 13 it's not happening 37 to 16 is your final score here in seattle as the seahawks at century link take home the w shea patterson was just the definition definition of terrible in the playoffs and Pretty much average to below average throughout. Couldn't get a good quarterback was a huge, huge factor, I think, in why uh, we never really excelled too far into the playoffs and never progressed that far into the playoffs. But that's going to do it for the video, guys. Hope you enjoy. Hope you enjoyed. I guess it's over now. So uh, thanks for watching. Jay Patterson fires five touchdown passes. Where was that whenever I was watching? Never. Take it easy.